The rebels essentially in, in Mindanao can change sides. You've got the MILF who one day can join the Abu Sayyaf and one day can join the Jema Islamiyah, which is a regional group. They switch hats. But the same thing is happening on the other side. In many in ways, in Maguindanao, you have the police, the Philippine National Police, who by day are with the government, with local government as the police. But at night, they'll take off their hats and then they'll join the private armies of some of these warlords and that's the difficulty who is going to maintain law and order mm -hmm. and as law and order breaks down in these areas it becomes more difficult for journalists to go into these areas and really give voices to the people mm -hmm. who are living in fear mm -hmm. there Mustafa you're going back to Somalia tomorrow are you scared uh, well in a way and in the other uh, as, as long as I'm going to do my duty uh, it is you know a culture of fear in Somalia what's happening a constant fear but uh, in addition to that what I'm getting back with is a courage you're going back with courage yes but not with a big uh, group of journalists with you right most of the journalists are not in Somalia right now where are they covering Somalia from uh, most of the journalists are in Nairobi uh, in Nairobi, where, yes, in Kenya. In Kenya. So, uh, but there are still, you know, few journalists who are left in the country, and uh, they are making really a sacrifice. Mustafa, thank you. And Maria, tell me precisely what it is that gets journalists into such terrible trouble in the Philippines. Is it, is it organized crime? What is it that they're reporting on that nobody wants them to report on? Christian, it changes. In this situation, the journalists who were killed were actually going to an event where a candidate was just filing his nomination papers for an election that will happen six months from now. That's all they were doing and yet they died in that process. Um, in other instances, you've got journalists who were caught in local conflicts. You've got, this one is a political election-related violence. You've got clan wars. You've also got the conflict between the insurgents, uh, the Muslim Islamic Liberation Front, the Moro National Liberation Front, and the Abu Sayyaf group, which, as you know, is, is connected, has been connected to Jama Islamiya and Al-Qaeda. So, the conflict comes in different areas. It's a, it's a complex situation. And as a journalist working in Mindanao, you have to be able to develop a sixth sense to avoid areas that, that where law and order is so weak that you can't tell where the danger is coming from, and yet continue trying to tell the story of the people who live in those areas and are trying to go about their daily lives. Well, of course, we wish you all the very best, both of you, Maria Ressa, Mustafa, Haji Abdinur, in two of the most dangerous countries for journalists in the world. And to learn more about journalists who've been killed in the Philippines, go to our website, cnn.com slash Amanpour. And next, the Hajj starts today. Who speaks for modern Islam? The Hajj. A sacred annual pilgrimage of millions of Muslims from around the world to Mecca, Saudi Arabia, the holiest of Muslim meeting places. The Hajj is both a search for and symbol of Muslim unity. Those who complete its rituals over five days are believed to be forgiven for their sins. Yet beneath the powerful appearance of unity, deep schisms divide Islam. Such as rivalry in between religious sects, the Sunni and Shia, and stark differences over the role of women, terrorism and the real meaning of jihad. Some Muslims prefer to focus on their common ground, like, like this imam Hajj, from California. A lot of times the division that you see, uh, it's cultural. Uh, and if you look through that, you see a lot of unity between the people. Yet strained relations between the Sunni majority in Saudi Arabia and the Shia majority Iran have government officials working to keep the peace. <laughs> We appreciate the latest positive messages by Iranian officials. We hope that no unwanted incidents happen during the Hajj season. Both Shia and Sunni pilgrims here say Muslims should not let their differences divide them.
there should be more understanding and harmony among all Muslims. There should be more dialogue between Sunnis and Shias, and they should not have their differences as they don't have it in here during Hajj. Despite the differences to be found among the millions of Muslims gathered here in Mecca, according to a recent report by Harvard University, performing the Hajj actually leads to greater feelings of unity among fellow Muslims, along with more favorable attitudes to women and non-Muslims. Findings which some say prove that the ancient rites and rituals of the Hajj are every bit as relevant to today's modern world. I should say CNN, Mecca, Saudi Arabia. So there is a lot of wishful thinking, but who does in fact speak for Islam today? Joining me, one of the world's leading authorities on Islam and an advisor to the Obama administration, he's Vali Nasser, and his new book is about the rise of the Muslim middle class. Welcome. Thank you. So they've said that the Hajj is incredible because whether you're pauper or prince, you're dressed in this white, you go to do the same thing, everybody's talking about unity. What really will bring unity and is it possible? Well, uh, unity is an ideal that Muslims have strived for for a very long time. But in reality, they're divided into nationalities, they're divided into sects, they're divided into classes. There are rich Muslim countries that are on a very different trajectory, like Turkey, like Dubai, that are part of the global economy. And then there are parts of the Muslim world that are outside of the global economy. And therefore, despite the rhetoric of, the un of unity, uh, in reality, the Muslim world is a very diverse place. All right, so you're focusing on the economy, and that is, frankly, the focus of your new book. Mm -hmm. What is it then that you found is going to make a difference in the Muslim world? Well, one of the uh, striking things about the Muslim world is that large parts of the Muslim world are outside of the global economy. They're not participating in the su global supply chain. You don't find many made in the Arab world uh, items at Walmart, for instance. So why not? Well, because they're not uh, uh, participating in the same kind of uh, economic relationships that Brazil, even Turkey, uh, their economies haven't opened up. Uh, they, they never integrated into global economies, sometimes because they're very wealthy by oil, sometimes because authoritarian regimes, as in North Africa, have shielded them from integrating the global economy. But the Muslim world is now gradually falling behind Latin America and Asia in terms of its integration into global economy. And that's part of the reason that we're seeing trouble in the Muslim world. Where the Muslim world is least integrated into the global economy, you have the greatest degree of immoderation and extremism. And where you have most integration to global economy in Malaysia, in, in Indonesia, Turkey, you're seeing much better news. So basically what you're saying is with the rise of a middle class, there could be a lot less extremism, a lot more moderation. So is it the middle class who you hope will speak for modern Islam? Yes, and that they will uh, sponsor and they will subsidize the right kind of talking about Islam. When you go to places like Turkey or Dubai, where you have businessmen, up and coming wealthy people, you see that they want to go to malls, they want to go to movie theaters, they want to eat well, stay at good hotels, they want clean mosques, and they prefer a kind of Islam that is about values but not political action. They just don't see jihad as good for their business or good for their image. You know, it reminds me of um, Thomas Friedman when he once mm -hmm. wrote that any country with a McDonald's is a country that won't go to war and that will be at peace. It's not exactly worked that way. Do you really think that, and what is your evidence for a rising middle class being non-extremist, non-militant, non-terrorist? Well, we're seeing it in, in countries that are, that are having now a middle class that is tied to a private sector, that is tied to a global economy. When you go to a country like Turkey, you go to the heartland of Anatolia. But Turkey is secular, remember, officially secular. What about in a country like Iran? Well, even in Iran, uh, you, you look at who supported the reform movement in Iran. It is the middle class that was the product of economic openings of the late 1990s and uh, in late 1980s and 1990s when the oil prices was low. It is those people who, as they've become richer, want to consume better, want to be part of the world, want more cultural opening, and want to also be able to sell more, more of their, what they produce to the region and want to be able to get foreign investment into Iran. And who opposes reform in Iran tend to be people who rely on government entitlements and have no vested interest in globalization. Let me play this uh, uh, segment of the speech that President Obama gave in uh, Cairo to the Islamic world. The enduring faith of over a billion people is so much bigger than the narrow hatred of a few. Islam is not part of the problem in combating violent extremism. It is an important part 
of promoting peace. So, he stated mm -hmm. something which many Muslims would agree with. Mm -hmm. However, the fact of the matter is there are segments of the Islamic mm -hmm. uh, population who resort to violence right. and extremism. What do you think, as he considers Afghanistan, the Middle East, let's say the Palestinian territories, what do they need to focus on? Is it economic empowerment? Well, economic opening that then creates a private sector or an economic uh, arena within society that is vibrant, that can then would support wealth and wealth generation, etc. When you look at a country like Indonesia, you think of 2002 Bali bombings. Indonesia has, st has steadily become more moderate and is moving in the right